you're seeing the wrong screen, I'm assuming. Are you no, seeing the George. speaker notes or are you seeing the presentation? Presentation. Oh, okay, perfect. All right. So yeah, George Bacchanizian, thanks um, for your time, everybody. I'm just gonna go really quickly, talk about uh, CVE. I'm gonna make it real quick though, like I said, we've been, CVE as a company has been around for, you can see here uh, a long time, over 105 years. And it's always been a technology company. It started with electrical at the beginning, but in 1915, electricity was a technology, I would, I would say. And we've uh, grown to a lot of different groups and divisions. And we see CV Technologies Group, which is us, we're right here in the middle. And uh, we, we have, we have this ground to cloud coverage of, of solutions, including um, this Observian cloud solution company, which is the most recent addition to CVE. And, and, the, and within our group, we have physical locations in Utah, Oregon, and Hawaii. But in addition to that, we have customers in states all over the country. And, and uh, we have, lots of engineers here. We have over 27 certified Cisco certified engineers. And one thing we take pride in is the fact that we have more engineers than we have account managers. And uh, we have expertise in a lot of areas. And, and myself, I focus on um, networking, security, and um, data center. And one of the things that that's really exciting about that, about being able to meet here and talk about this is CV has been as a large portfolio of um, of solutions that we can provide and we can see here that Cisco uh, represented by not only traditional Cisco thousand eyes duo and Meraki not on this list but we have other solutions that we can provide and we have engineers who are you know proficient to expert in all of these areas and this is not exhaustive by any means, but I wanted to just let you guys know that uh, CV is definitely a, a broad company with lots of different uh, technologies we can help you integrate. And, and I have a question here. This is where it gets fun, I think. When an application takes longer um, than usual to load, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? And as you look at these options, yeah, go ahead and put something in the chat. It would be kind of fun to to go back and see what people say. But do you think that it's the app would be the first thing that that a user blames, the device, bad luck, or or the network itself? And I, I can see uh, somebody saying network. Uh, a couple of people putting network in here, and of course. We would say, right, most people will blame the network, but it's a little bit more complex than that, in my opinion, because then you have to ask, what is the network? Is it the LAN? Is it the WAN? Is it the internet? Is it VPN? And do you have, if you have an answer to this question, feel free to you know, put, in, put something into the chat. Um, I'll just wait a moment. All, John Edwards says all. Uh, bingo, right? All of the above. So if it's all of the above, then the real answer to like, what's the source of the problem is it depends. And here are some interesting things to consider is that the internet is the new network. Um, the cloud as a new data center and SaaS is the new application. And finally, home is the new office, right? So. If you think about things like out of the traditional box, when as network um, engineers, as operations, um, individuals who support networks and who manage networks, we have to think way beyond what we can, what is happening within our own organization and within the realm of what we traditionally have control over. So what that leads me to is, is this idea of are you managing the application experience when you're managing a network or your, your um, service that you're providing to your users, your customers? And the application experience includes 
all the things that you see on this slide over here, right? Visibility um, into how it's performing, into how users experiences to that application. And, um, and then also what action can you take? What is an actionable piece of information you could have to improve the application experience for a particular user in a particular area, whether they're in the office uh, or traveling or at home. And, and this um, as the pre premise for the call, I'm gonna go ahead and let Alex go into details about Thousand Eyes, which is what, what's going to help us achieve these things. And um, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the time over to you, Alex, thank you. Thank you, George. Boy, you did a great job setting it up. I love your slide with the four kind of problem landscape elements. Uh, I'm going to be talking a lot about that today. And um, Bruce, if you want to make me a presenter, I'll begin to share some content. While he's getting that stood up, as uh, Bruce mentioned, I was part of Thousand Eyes prior to the Cisco acquisition. So today we are part of Cisco. That's been true for about a little over a year, about a year and two months. The transaction closed in August. But Thousand Eyes has been around for about 10 years, uh, a little over. Uh, it was in 2010 that Thousand Eyes was founded, and it was founded by a couple of guys, Mohit and Ricardo, who were writing their PhD thesis on the internet at UCLA and realized that uh, you know the landscape was dramatically changing, and it's just the way that George described it. So I'm going to borrow kind of what you just said there, George, and uh, I'll present a couple of things. Everybody able to see the presentation okay? All right, this is the problem landscape that George just described, and he already called out some of the challenges, and this is what our two founders noticed about what was taking place is as more and more services migrated to the cloud and as enterprises engaged and, and started to throw a lot of time and resources behind this cloud migration. And as the Internet became the primary way in which customers were doing business with their vendors, with their customers, with as customers work to you know, engage with uh, like a VPN uh, architecture in order to access corporate and internal resources from uh, a remote location, a coffee shop, uh, you know, at home. And as uh, organizations began to enable more and more of their engagement strategy through the internet and through web-based services, there was uh, a massive opportunity as our founders saw it. Because with this digital transformation and with this cloud migration and SaaS becoming the new application stack for most organizations and the internet becoming the new network, of course, there was no longer an ability to get some really good data about what the user's experience was like. Of course, the traffic uh, to the customer uh, and the traffic to the internal uh, targets was traversing the internet, which is a network that the enterprise no longer had control over. And so there wasn't an opportunity for them to see and get the same kind of visibility that they used to get in the past. And so this was the problem landscape where our, our two founders realized there was a market opportunity and Thousand Eyes was founded to address that. Now, a lot has changed. Obviously, uh, every organization is on uh, you know some sort of a cloud journey and is leveraging some aspect of SaaS and has got uh, some level of dependency on the internet. But what I think we should talk about today, and when I was asked to speak, I thought, well, let's talk about something that's really relevant. Let's talk about what's happening right now. And we're kind of post uh, the peak of the pandemic. We are all in enterprises that are trying to adapt to the next normal. Uh, we might be a knowledge worker. We might be directly in IT. We might be in an executive role and decision-making role for the organization. So what does that next normal look like and what kind of challenges are we going to be presented with? So first, I think it's obvious as we are all see, sitting here on a remote lunch and learn that remote work is here to stay. So I, I think we as an enterprise have to understand how are we going to empower our workers to be productive while they're at home and, and do so for the long run. Now, the other opportunity that I think all of us can vouch for here in your own organizations is how the pandemic accelerated the pace by which the migration to the cloud was already underway. So, like I said, I think everybody was already underway when it comes to migrating applications and workloads to the cloud, but this really accelerated this, uh, the, the pandemic and the environment that we're all in. So, I think uh, that's probably not much of a, a question mark at this point. We know that the uh, cloud adoption is increasing. And then I want to say something about what you see here in the last column, which is a lot of the ways in which applications are being modernized 
besides leveraging new architectures like microservices, the developers and the DevOps organization is writing apps and building code that's highly integrated, that has a significant dependency on API calls being made, whether it be for content, whether it be for authentication and security, whether it be to other specific apps within the organization or as integral to like a, an ERP application, there is a significant amount uh, of APIs that any organization is managing. And as, as maybe, you know, if you're on the network team or the infrastructure team here on the call, if it's not sort of top of mind for you and you're saying, I don't really know how much of a dependency we have on APIs, I can guarantee if you talk to your app teams and you talk to your developers, that that's how many of your applications function today. And there's the reason that's important, the reason I thought I'd bring it up today is that we're talking about visibility across the internet. We're talking about thousand eyes as it pertains to this new landscape that I just described where we all have a dependency on the internet. Well, if our applications are dependent on API calls, those API calls are being done across the internet. They are relying on services that are cloud-based, that are hosted outside your data center. And in order for your application to function properly, in other words, you as a network organization or as an infrastructure organization, you've got to have visibility on the internet because that's going to be one of the things that could break. And we'll talk a little bit about that. Now, Thousand Eyes being able to provide visibility across the internet is significant when it comes to managing your interaction with, uh, like your customers' interaction with your websites or your employees' interaction with SaaS vendors. But I, I uh, and so there's a lot of use cases for the visibility we provide. And we can definitely get into that in more one-on-one -on -one conversations as you start to think about where some of what I'm gonna show you is relevant to your company. But I wanted to pick one today, like I said, that was relevant. So I'm gonna pick, we're gonna talk a little bit about security. And the reason uh, I'm doing that is everything we just shared on those last uh, three uh, bullet points in that last slide, when we talk about kind of the, the current landscape that we're all in and how enterprises are adapting to the new normal, uh, we're focused on creating an opportunity for the hybrid worker, the worker who's working at home and potentially part of their time in the office to be able to connect to internal services, to be able to do so securely, and to be able to do so in a way where the IT organization and the security team members have control. And we can still maintain, uh, whether it's zero trust that you're implementing or whether it's threat protection, uh, it's important that you have the same level of security and control that you used to in this new hybrid work environment. Now, what I'm going to say is, of course, you may not have all of the pieces and parts. You may not be leveraging some of the same security services that I'm going to be talking about today at the present time, or you may use different vendors. Obviously, I'm part of Cisco, so our framework is going to be Cisco based, but I'll bet you've started to hear in the marketplace this concept of SASE, Secure Access, Secure Edge. And Getting some visibility across this is a, one of the valid use cases for Thousand Eyes because we provide visibility across the internet and because we provide visibility into third party service providers like SaaS vendors and IaaS vendors. And of course, that includes your cloud security vendors. So I'm going to talk about uh, this specific use case today and we'll use it to highlight the capabilities of Thousand Eyes. And I'm going to go into here the next slide is going to be focused a little bit more specific on how this type of an architecture might look in a typical um, enterprise. So obviously you may still, even though you're migrating to the cloud, you may still have a data center footprint. And as you may look at your current network topology, you might see an MPLS network. You've obviously got DIA options at your data center, as well as your branch locations. You might be leveraging that for SD-WAN. You might be then interfacing with uh, at some of the SASE components, and we'll actually put all the components up here in a moment, but you might be deploying some aspect or all of a SASE architecture in order to provide security to your employees and, and provide access to those services using the new SD-WAN architecture. And those services might be hosted inside your data center. They might be hosted uh, by a third party as a SaaS vendor might deliver this aspect of it, like Office 365 to your end users. You might be also trying to give visibility as the end user connects via VPN or negotiates their, uh, you know, to with their SSO vendor. And then of course you, you may also have a significant number of different types of offices. Maybe there's branch offices, maybe you've got an HQ that you're still trying to manage. And all of that is gonna of course have connectivity to the internet. And in order to get visibility from every perspective, you're going to need to understand what does performance look like from a variety of vantage points. 
So what's the enterprise vantage point? When we think about our network and we think about the aspects that we control on the land and aspects of the WAN that were under our management, what does it look like across the WAN? What is the health of the WAN? Can I discover the path? that traffic takes across my WAN? Can I identify when there's packet loss, latency, jitter across my WAN infrastructure and my WAN networks? Can I look at it from an end user's perspective? And can I you know, log into the VPN? Can I see what it's like at their home network? And then of course, traverse uh, the path as they, they get to the VPN gateway and then either head off to one of our SaaS vendors or access internal services. So in order to get really good performance data, I'm gonna have to have a vantage point on the end user's device as well. And then finally, it's great for me to see what's happening inside my network and to see what's happening from an end user's vantage point, but can I also control what I'm seeing from those vantage points with what I might be seeing outside my network? So what does my network look like outside my network? What does it look like when I'm hitting Office 365? Let's say if I'm managing an organization that's primarily headquartered in Utah, but what does it look like when I'm accessing Office 365 uh, from you know, another part of the country? What does it look like to access my own websites from another part of the country, right? All of that is really gonna be important as you think about how do I manage performance in this new environment? Now, when we talk specifically about security, I'm gonna put up here an architecture, like I said, that's Cisco based. You may or may not have all of these technologies today. Uh, you might have a different vendor for some of these. Um, that's okay. I still think that you're gonna understand the concept that I'm gonna be explaining when it comes to observability. So the use case here and the observability dilemma as we're focused on it right now is to, let's let's talk about security from a remote worker standpoint. So you've heard SASE discussed in the past uh, by not only Cisco, but other uh, technology players in the marketplace. And you've, you've got really an architecture kind of visually described for you here so that you can kind of think about what I'm gonna um, be talking about visually for a moment. So on the left, you see an end user's device. And in this case, uh, they might be connecting uh, through any connect and uh, building a tunnel. Um, obviously there's a variety of different ways to send traffic in our case to umbrella. And there's uh, a cloud delivered firewall at play here and SWG traffic will be sent from a variety of different devices across an IPsec tunnel. Now you might have a proxy chain or a pack file approach that can be used to forward web transactions to the SWG. And in order for the chaining to happen, you must first point your DNS to umbrella. So you've got DNS, you've got umbrella, you've got the internet connection that's at play here. And then of course uh, you can send that traffic out to the web or you can use that to be sending traffic internally to some of your private apps across your network. So pretty, pretty significant number of dependencies here. Now, many of those services, as you see, um, like Umbrella and Duo and, and you know, your CloudX as security broker, your DNS hosting, that's all taking place by a third party out on the internet somewhere. And when it comes to troubleshooting issues, as you get that report from a remote worker that says, hey, I'm trying to get to Office 365, or I'm trying to get to our internal uh, intranet resource and I can't, I'm at home, I'm, I, I'm going to blame the network. I think the network's got an issue. I think it's the VPN, right? How well, as you in an IT administrator's role has to jump in on this and address their concern, what is it that you're going to first need to do? One of the things obviously is recreating the issue. How can you identify what domain this problem might lie in? In order to do that, um, I've heard you know countless times from customers. One way they do that is remote into the user's machine and attempt to you know go through the process of connecting to the VPN, choosing maybe the specific gateway. Uh, basically, they're recreating the end user's experience, and you can just imagine how much time that takes. And they're doing that because it could be a lot of different things. It could be the end user's device. It could be their home network. It could be the IS, uh, the ISP, like their local ISP gateway or somewhere within the ISP metro span where they're connecting. It could be the, the security as a service provider suite of services. Obviously, there could be an issue with the MFA uh, platform. There could be an issue with resolving DNS. There obviously could be an issue with the cloud-based firewall. There could be an issue with the VPN gateway or maybe there's a transit ISP somewhere in the middle here as they head out to the internet that's got um, a layer three device that's dropping packets. I mean, it could be a lot of different things. And it could just be that the SaaS vendor themselves 
the app is experiencing some type of an outage or has got some kind of a performance problem. It could be that there's even just a network device within the SaaS vendor's data center where there's a problem. Or let's say maybe the application itself has an API call that's being made to, or some of that content is being uh, delivered by uh, a, a partner of theirs, right? The way the application's designed might make it so complex that it's not that the application itself is failing, but there's a dependency built into that application that's failing. So you can imagine, I mean, I, I sympathize as we talk to customers, how do you get visibility into all of these things and begin to rule them all out? Logging into the end user's device, you know, creating a VPN tunnel and then trying to access that is one way. But obviously we know that how much time that takes. And if you're scaling this up to support a remote workforce that's hundreds or thousands of people, I mean, obviously that's going to take a lot of time. You're going to have to have a massive help desk staff in order to get in there and go through that type of a discovery and triage motion if you're trying to understand what's going on. Now, there's a lot of tools. Obviously, each of these vendors uh, might offer their own tool. They might have their own ability to provide metrics. Um, but how do we get a real end-to-end -end view how do we get observability across this entire stack? How do we look at it from the remote workers perspective and see their path as they traverse uh, all of the security components here and all this third party service providers that make up that SASE framework, as well as, you know, follow their traffic and follow the path out to the Internet or out to one of our internal networks. Same thing is true if you're trying to secure the edge of your network. Um, the only big difference, of course, is now you've got your your branch office here on the left. You've got SD-WAN probably at play if you're really adopting the, the SASE framework, but you're still going out and building a tunnel with Umbrella. You're still leveraging multi-factor authentication in the cloud. You're still now, depending upon cloud-based firewalls, you're still you know, in a situation where as an SD-WAN solution, you're going to have access to the overlay and you're going to have tools and, and control and functions that you can perform through their tool set to enable policy-based routing and things like that. But when there's a problem in the underlay, that's where an SD-WAN vendor's tools are going to leave you blind. And if that's the case, then you've got the same kind of troubleshooting motion as you start to try to understand why performance from internal users, let's say, uh, and I just heard this one about an hour ago on a call with a customer, they said, hey, I've got, here's the use case I have for Thousand Eyes. They said, okay, I've got, I've got a user reporting that you know, they're trying to use Teams chat, so MS Teams chat. They're trying to use that from, you know, their VPN connected device at home. Sometimes they're in the office and then sometimes they're uh, at a branch location. And they tell me that features of Teams chat are unavailable to them depending on which location they're in. They tell me that performance changes dramatically when it comes to the performance of Teams chat across the VPN versus when they're in the office versus where they're at the branch location. How do I get visibility on the path so that I can identify what's different, what's changing? Well, that's a great example where in the, in the previous slide, you needed to be able to see from a secure remote workers endpoint and create a visualization that way. But then of course, you also need to be able to control that by getting a vantage point inside the enterprise and running that same type of test out to those same targets so that you can understand what it looks like as we're traversing that SD-WAN underlay, as we're making our way through the SD-WAN fabric and as we're actually traversing the internet to that target. That's because in order to troubleshoot that issue, you've got to be able to rule out and rule in the enterprise LAN, obviously the SD-WAN underlay, like I said, maybe there's a problem uh, with the ISP that Umbrella is using. So think about not just your peering relationships and the DIA options you have at your branch offices and your data centers, but think about the peering relationships that your you know, SASE vendors are you know, having in, in, at their data centers and for their service. Often what we see when we jump into a path visualization inside of Thousand Eyes is that it's a leg uh, inside the ISP network that's got the handoff to that cloud service provider. So is that where maybe the problem is? Of course, again, like on the last slide, is it maybe the security as a service vendor solution itself? That's, that's at fault here where we're starting to see uh, latency introduced. Uh, is it the uh, overlay? Right? How can we actually maybe inside of Thousand Eyes create what we call a multi-service view where we look at traffic across the overlay and the underlay simultaneously in the same view so that we can do some comparative analytics and we can isolate problems that way? Is it the transit ISP? Obviously, a lot of this stuff is the same. So can we call out exactly where the problem is? And that requires that you have observability end to end, which is obviously you know, what we're here to talk about today. 
So Thousand Eyes provides SASE observability, and you have, the, as, as uh, an IT organization, have the ability to uh, get some intelligence and, as I think George rightly said, not only get data, but be able to get insight and take action. That's really what Thousand Eyes we want to enable you to do. So you've got to collect information from the application. So you've got to understand, you know, when it's an app that's really the root cause of this performance problem. You've got to be able to also pinpoint issues down to the specific service provider, down to the specific layer three device or the link between layer three devices. And you got to be able to do so in a compelling way so that you can isolate that root cause and then communicate with the teams either internally or externally that maybe have influence over that specific link or segment and can actually make the change. Now, it also frees you up instead of spinning up a P1 call and having everybody get on the phone and having everybody work to try to isolate where the problem is to let everybody off to say, this is something we cannot control. That's super important. Now, can you, when you do know it's one of these, uh, you know, links or hops out on the internet, can you correlate that with what's happening on the internet? Can you look at things over a timeline and monitor when maybe it's an ISP that's making a DGP route change? You know, understanding when that might be the culprit, can you look at these sort of larger scale events to say, okay, now I know where the problem is, but I'd like to know why there's a problem. And it might be uh, part of a larger internet outage or service provider outage or part of a big BGP change that's been made by one of the, the internet service providers out there. That's pretty valuable when it comes to not only problem isolation, but when it comes to things like, what do I do in response to being made aware that there's this problem that I can isolate? How do I, like I was talking to a customer yesterday who said, you know, uh, it was the reason we're on the phone with you is because of our DDoS vendor. So think about that SASE framework in their specific case, they had a DDoS vendor that uh, had made a route advertisement uh, change and they were no longer advertising their routes. So in the case, they said, you know, that was a four hour outage with their DDoS vendor when if they would have been known, if they would have known that was what had happened, um, using our the Thousand Eyes BGP monitoring, they would have been able to, you know, begin advertising their own routes, and that would have been a 15 minute outage instead of a four hour outage. So we're talking about real opportunities to make measurable impact in the organization when you have the visibility that Thousand Eyes provides. And since we're talking about remote workers today, obviously in the case of like the applications the business needs in order to function, whether they be a SaaS based app or an internal hosted app, those those apps have to be available. 24 by 7 now where worker, workers are not only remote but they're working around the clock so we want to at thousand eyes give you visibility across all of this and the way we do it i'm going to kind of get into some of the details about how we do what we do the way we do that is we begin to develop a correlated approach so internet insights you see at the top is kind of our detection of global network outages and incidents and things that might be affected uh, by those outages so the scale think of the scale and the scope or the blast radius of an internet outage, you know, what are the services that might be unavailable as a result of that internet uh, outage that we might be seeing maybe on a carrier network, or maybe like thinking about it more from a service provider standpoint, maybe it's a DNS hosting vendor, or it's a CDN vendor that's got an outage and it's thinking about like, well, who do they host for, right? Who's got their DNS hosted with that provider or who's that CDN front ending? Well. That's where the product that we provide called Internet Insights enables you to get a scale and a scope. Um, it's available within the platform. And we also have the integration with all your testing data that you do inside of Thousand Eyes so that you can correlate your testing data and the specific things that you're seeing across the monitor domains and the monitored uh, URLs and the other uh, networks that you're monitoring with Thousand Eyes. How would I correlate that automatically with a large scale internet event? And then not only do I see that they're affecting my tests, but who else are they affecting, right? That's that's a super powerful way to take the power of Thousand Eyes visibility in a correlated fashion and to develop some real positive insights and a way to be able to then inform your next steps that you might take for remediation. Uh, obviously, in order to do that, we're collecting information about what's the app experience like. We might do that by scripting a transaction against a, a third party SaaS vendor. So we might want to, you know, log into Teams chat. We might want to actually send a message, so execute a test message, and then watch that all happen inside of Thousand Eyes so that we can see that the application is performing like we expect. Or we might just want to load the page. We might have specific SaaS vendors. We just want to make sure that they're available and that we can see that their service is uh, the page loading in a, in a reasonable amount of time or at least within acceptable thresholds. Maybe it's internally. You know, These are our websites that we're monitoring from the outside in or from our vantage points inside our network. How does our web page load? What are the dependencies on that web page? 
kind of like you, you might have seen recently with the Facebook outage, where so many different websites now have integration with Facebook that when the Facebook services all went down, as we all saw for a day or so, we had many customer websites that went offline just because that object that was served up by the Facebook servers was failing to load, the whole web page didn't load. So you might need to correlate the fact that you've got dependencies on these other services like social media or advertising, analytics. Um, lots of things are integrated now into a web page. So understanding those dependencies is super important when you're trying to correlate all this data together to understand where the impact is coming from that your user is reporting. So you're going to be able to get scale and scope, application experience. Of course, beneath that, we're collecting all the information around HTTP availability, response time throughput. We're getting that network information. So Thousand Eyes provides through those vantage points I was discussing earlier, the ability to build a path visualization using that synthetic testing, whether it be a synthetic network transaction or synthetic web transaction, we're going to build a path visualization that's going to enable you to see from source to target, regardless of whether that's a source inside your network, outside your network, or from a remote worker, and whether the target is inside your network, outside your network with a SaaS vendor or up in the cloud, we're going to help you build that path visualization in addition to collecting the network metrics for every hop, every link along that path. And, and then, of course, like I mentioned already, with the BGP monitoring that is included, you're, you're going to see BGP route changes. Now, when you have visibility into all of this in one platform and you have it all as you're a troubleshooter or as you're an architect and you're doing some design and planning and looking at the most optimal routes, you know, to, you know, as far as where to build your, your uh, websites, which availability zone, let's say in AWS, you know, you can begin to take a correlated view like that and do some really powerful things. As a troubleshooter, obviously, you're going to have access to exactly, you know, where the root cause of the problem is, regardless if it's web, regardless if it's server related, regardless if it's a network and it's a network you own or control or it's the internet. And then also, of course, what's the performance of these third parties that might be, you know, potentially making a change that impacts your specific site. So troubleshooters have the power to make root cause isolation in a matter of a minute or two. These are the types of root cause isolations that if you had multiple tools like this, uh, and most people don't have, you know, the path visualization across the internet. So that, you know, is largely a gap. But if they, if you've got an APM tool or you've got an NMS solution that you've Deploy traditionally, you can pivot between tools. You can spin up a SEV1 bridge. You can get all the teams to jump on and report what they're seeing from all their tools. And maybe in an hour or two, or sometimes longer, unfortunately, you, you get to root cause. With Thousand Eyes, we're going to call it out using our automation and pinpoint the exact root cause in minutes. So now you're taking that time that you spend troubleshooting using multiple tools and reducing that to just a few minutes. And you're keeping a whole bunch of teams off of a SEV1 bridge and you're getting service restored a lot faster. Uh, let me give you some examples of how this data is used and give you a little bit better visualization into our platform. So these are some screenshots directly out of Thousand Eyes. And so in this case, I'm going to talk about how that multi-layer correlation that I just described in the last slide is actually going to make an impact. So the first thing you see that we're noticing across a timeline view of a test that we have running to Office 365, it's a, an HTTP server test, as you can see at the top of that graphic, hopefully. Uh, you can see as the timeline, it's obvious that, you know, the uh, things are getting worse, you know, the time is, is, the server response time seems to be taking a lot longer, as you can see the little rise there in that blue um, graph. And then uh, what we don't know is why is the server response time taking so much longer, right? What are we noticing? Is it due to an increase in network latency? We can kind of see there's an increase in network latency if we pivot from the HTTP server view into our network views. You, and in this case, they're picking it from one specific office. We can see that latency has increased. Well, why did it increase? Why are we seeing server response times increase, at least the perception from an outside user as they're trying to interact with one of our websites, or in this case, sorry, it's Office 365. So as they interact with Office 365, it might manifest as a server response time issue. It might look uh, like there's additional network latency, but why is it being changed? Uh, why is that happening? Well, as you notice right there, uh, you can look down the bottom. Uh, we're isolating, we've created a path visualization uh, by executing that test. So that's available to you in the platform for all of those time slices that you see in that graph at the top. And you can step through it and walk through it and see exactly what's going on. And when uh, any uh, of those metrics that are being collected from that testing round fall outside of the established threshold, you're gonna see something called out like you do in red. Obviously red's bad. So we're gonna see here that 
the service degradations due to a network path change that was being uh, executed within the SaaS providers network. So when you look at that path, we're giving you the domain or the, the hop owner. So you know whose uh, network we are inside. We can get, of course, all the metrics for every hop loss latency and jitter across each of those hops. We can also get link metrics and we can step through a timeline so that we can actually see when things change and when the path changes and if that's the root cause of our performance problems. So that's super powerful for a troubleshooter to be able to walk a timeline to correlate server response time issues uh, with a network path change because how it's experienced is not always the root cause of why there's uh, that type of an experience being uh, reported. So that's one powerful example. I thought uh, I would also share with you when you look at our path visualizations, uh, it is widely recognized across the industry. If you do some research into to, um, the, the capabilities of Thousand Eyes and competitors that are in the market, one of the things you're gonna find time and time again is that Thousand Eyes is really the gold standard for path analysis. Now, part of that's because a lot of the other tools that you have out on the marketplace, like your APM tools, um, have started to try to add network visibility to their traditional application performance management suite. And um, obviously, it's, it's just sort of best effort or it's, a, you know, it's, it's after the fact. It's something they've added later. They're a traditional or core application performance management solution that's adding on the network visibility. So it's not going to be as useful to you in a troubleshooting motion as an operations team member where Thousand Eyes was developed, like I said up front, by a couple of guys who understand how the internet works deeply and who have created the vantage points that we've chosen inside our cloud agent footprint based on how the internet works, where the key connection points are in the key hubs, where within each market you would want to get a, a vantage point. So think about it like this. If you're wanting to get an interaction, like a representative view of what it's like to interact with one of your websites from you know, Denver versus Salt Lake, you might want to see different sources for your tests. Like in, in Salt Lake, I might want to source from Comcast, whereas in Denver, I might want to source from CenturyLink. And that's really important because, you know, the internet works differently and the number of uh, end users that are likely coming in across one of those different networks uh, can play a big role in isolating what the root cause is. So Thousand Eyes will make multiple vantage points in each market from multiple ISP networks in that market available so that you can get a real representative view of what your users are actually experiencing. And we're gonna display that on the path visualization as you see here. There's 16 different categories of metrics and data that you're gonna get available to you within that path visualization. And that's by far the most that you're gonna see across vendors. We also unify that and make it interactive. So just hovering over any one of those nodes or every one of those links with your cursor is gonna pop up the hop owner, link latency, DHCP markings, uh, latency loss jitter. Obviously all of that is gonna be super powerful, but then the way we represent it visually can also be an overlooked value uh, as you think about thousand eyes in the way that uh, we might stack up against some of the other tools that you have, especially when you're trying to communicate internally with other executives or other stakeholders in uh, the company when they report an issue and they say, what's really the problem here, guys? I need to know, right? We, I'm trying to conduct a town hall meeting and, and uh, everybody's reporting problems or I can't, you know, my audio quality is terrible or I can't present content, right? What is the source of this and how did this happen? It's really powerful when you can show something visual versus like do a screenshot of a trace route and send it over to an executive. You, we can all just imagine how powerful a visualization like this where the hop is specifically called out with the hop owner in red. That tends to end that conversation as far as an IT credibility story. And it tends to focus the conversation now on, okay, well, what can we do about this? And how can I work with my vendor to get that back online? Another example I thought I'd share while we're on this topic, you know, that type of visibility that we're providing is super powerful when it comes to the SD-WAN use case. So this is an example of when network conditions through the overlay tunnel start to degrade. Now SD-WAN is there for that reason. So you've got, um, you know, from an uh, experience standpoint and from a policy-based routing standpoint, you are going to have options. You're, you're going to be able to use your SD-WAN vendors tool sets to make sure that everybody still has a good experience. But that doesn't change the fact that there's been some type of degradation or there's been some kind of an outage maybe in one of your DIA networks. And that's going to be something you need to investigate. You can't let that persist too long. So what we might see across the overlay is that there's network latency that have been, you know, starting to increase in the tunnel. But how do we know where that's coming from? We don't necessarily know. Now, 
that's where Thousand Eyes, like I was saying before, maybe through a multi-service view or just separate tests that you've got running inside of the tool, you're going to be able to now expose the underlay path and be able to uh, pinpoint exactly where that latency is coming from. So in this case, it's obviously a specific link on the target side of an underlay network that you can isolate and then share with that hop owner and that link owner. And that allows you, as you're thinking about maybe designing an SD-WAN rollout, or as an operations team, as you're supporting an SD-WAN rollout, that allows you to take very specific action, or it allows you to design a more resilient network, or maybe choose a different DIA vendor if this is a repeated event, um, because you have a set of data inside of Thousand Eyes that you can save and use when you're sitting down with your ISP vendors and saying, okay, look, here's what I'm seeing, and it, this is unacceptable. This is something that's going to have to change. What can you make uh, as a change? You know, we've got a specific hop or a specific link that's you know repeatedly introducing latency into our experience. That's that's got to change, right? How do we how do we work together to get that changed? Or like I said, if you're still designing it, you can maybe make a different choice on the front end. But it's hard to do all of that stuff without data. It's hard to sit down with your vendors and have a meaningful conversation that can result in actionable uh, steps that you can take unless you've got the data. So Thousand Eyes provides you the data to do that. Um, I mentioned already, obviously, there's the BGP monitoring capabilities. This is something because we're designed to be an internet-centric tool from the beginning. Uh, when you compare the tools that you might have access to, like I said, that are more maybe APM focused, or if you've got a traditional network monitoring solution that kind of becomes blind once you get outside your, your corporate edge, Thousand Eyes can provide a pretty powerful uh, and, and valuable tool from a BGP monitoring standpoint. That's just something we include with every testing round that we do. And yet, even as it, as it stands on its own, BGP monitoring um, in the context of everything that we said is super important to have. And it's super important that the way that it's represented inside of the data set, inside the path visualizations is useful to you. Uh, there's a, definitely a lot of, you know, kind of inexpensive BGP monitoring solutions that you've got out on the market, but, you know, then you're buying a tool for every specific piece, right? You're buying a tool to monitor BGP and then you're buying a separate tool for your APM solution, a separate tool for network visibility. And that becomes really difficult when you're trying to swivel between those tools to kind of do that manual inference of, okay, this, you know, all my tools are telling me this, this is where the problem is. So Thousand Eyes uh, is going to be super powerful in the correlation. And finally, because we're doing all this testing across um, you know, so our customers configure the tests from their vantage points that they select. Maybe they're one of our cloud vantage points, or maybe it's one they created inside their network. But that all that data is being fed back to Thousand Eyes to create those path visualizations, to trigger those alerts, uh, to allow the customers to walk the timeline. So we have a huge data set because we're collecting all that data from all those customer test rounds. We've chosen to anonymize that data and use some proprietary algorithms to do some outage detection. So whenever we see three customers that are testing to the same target or they have tests ex executing across the same path, we are going to uh, create a, a trigger whenever that's, there's more than three testing rounds that are failing across three different customers. And we can flag that as a larger scale internet event. And then we can begin, because we know where the tests were targeted at, at providing some scale and scope as to which services are affected. So we're aggregating all this anonymized data together from all of our Thousand Eyes customers, making that available as part of the product that you could purchase so that you can then correlate that with your specific tests. And that helps you to understand what's the severity of this outage, right? And, and, and what uh, potential other services might be affected. That, uh, like you can see here on the top, is represented on the left, which geos are you know, affected which other service providers on the right are maybe affected. And then in the center there with that uh, specific node, what is the root cause? What is the culprit of this outage? Uh, and that's super powerful. It's a lot more uh, relevant when it comes to communicating internally that you, know, you can actually execute uh, these types of uh, data gathering exercises versus like a going to down detector or you know going to somebody else who's just reporting that they can't get to a certain web page like a status page. If you can use the actual synthetic test data and the failing of tests and this type of a visualization to communicate the the scope of a large scale internet event, it can be really powerful as a report to or as opposed to like you know anecdotal or user reported feedback that you might get from some of the the free tools that are out there. So wanted to make sure I highlighted on that. Everything you see within Thousand Eyes that I've shown you, all the screenshots, uh, is available to be shared. You just click a button up in the top right while you're inside the platform. So if you're a troubleshooter, you want to share this with the app team, or if you're on the app team and you want to share it with the network team, or maybe you're on the network team and you want to share it with your ISP, you can share any of those uh, windows in time 
and it'll be fully interactive for whoever you share it with. They can scroll through all the different views from web all the way through to the network. They can walk the timeline. They can apply the filters. They can isolate nodes, hover over every node in the path and get all the information that they would need. They just can't change anything. So that allows you to take that collaboration timeline down from you know, what might take several exchanges back and forth over the course of an hour down to instantaneously so that you're seeing in, in the same sheet of music. And then of course, everything we do can be built. Uh, you can build custom dashboards for different teams or for displaying in your NOC. Um, you can take every bit of data that your testing rounds will produce and build all types of different ways to visualize that data in dashboards through all the uh, various widgets we have, you know, pie charts, red, yellow, green, tiles like you see here. And it'll give you the ability to take any one of the specific metrics uh, that we might be collecting from a data standpoint and display that as a tile. So maybe you want to see what the application availability is for Office 365 on an ongoing basis from all your vantage points that you've got the testing being run from. Or maybe you wanna look at like your DNS service providers availability or umbrellas availability. So you're, you're, we're still in that kind of security focused use case. What are the, you know, what are the performance of those vendors so that I can quickly understand if that's what's going wrong. Or maybe I wanna see it from the vantage point of an office or an actual end user, right? I can build all of those widgets inside of a dashboard so that I can really start to isolate uh, where problems are quickly from a dashboard. And this is, this is super powerful when it comes to proactive work. Like your, your team comes in in the morning, they can look at the dashboard and know, okay, we've got issues starting to pop up in one specific office. Let's go get some team members focused on what's going on there. And that really is powerful as far as kind of getting ahead of problems before you see the flood of tickets coming in through the service desk. The last thing I'll share before we wrap up is just a couple of customer case studies. Um, this is how it, the platform's working for some customers. Uh, we had a specific customer, uh, in this case, a global consumer goods company. Um, they obviously had a, a hybrid uh, WAN where they had some MPLS, some SD-WAN, and their operations team wasn't really able to give visibility into some of the things that uh, they were seeing across like their Microsoft Express route. And they had a zero trust solution implemented. In this case, it was Zscaler. Of course, they had ISP networks at play, and they really didn't have visibility into any of those third-party service providers or networks. And their their specific quote they shared with us is similar to the the one I characterized for everybody earlier, where they just spent like the first two hours trying to understand and recreate an issue before they could then even begin to troubleshoot the issue. That's the type of time that they have saved working with Thousand Eyes is that first two hours of recreating it. And then they now are able to take the data that we generate and hold their service providers accountable. So when they are seeing an event within Zscaler, they know that it's Zscaler and they can work with Zscaler using a share link and say, hey, this is what's going on. This is what we're seeing. And they can prove it versus the finger pointing versus maybe having Zscaler ask them to run a whole bunch of diagnostic tests, right? They've got that data. They can just share that with them. And in their case, as you can see, the benefit to them, as you see at the bottom there, they, they're they now in a, a situation where they're just troubleshooting over the course of, uh, you know, uh, let's say 30 minutes versus maybe something that would take them days. And another kind of in this security frame that I chose uh, was there was uh, a significant multinational bank and there was, uh, in their case, a, a significant amount of media coverage because so many customers, they were such a well-known bank, so many customers were reporting uh, a, a significant difficulty uh, interacting with their services and employees even of the, of the bank itself uh, were pretty frustrated with their experience accessing some of the key SaaS apps that they use. So they, similar to the, the other company that I described and similar to, you know, I'm, I'm sure so many of your experiences, they were spending hours and or days uh, getting into, you know, recreating these experiences from the customer's perspective and from the employee's expect, uh, perspective. We gave them that kind of outside in, inside out visibility that they were lacking uh, into both the customer banking portal that they have, as well as to their SaaS vendors uh, that they were depending on, which then enabled them to reduce the time they spend identifying the issue. Uh, so MTTI, and then of course, just getting to a place where they can do repair and they can actually work to get those services restored. And that uh, took, you know, their troubleshooting time down from hours and days to just under 10 minutes, which for them had a real measurable impact in the way that their reputation was being kind of drugged through the mud. And then also the way in which employee turnover was being uh, becoming a problem for them. So there's real measurable impact for the type of visibility that we're providing both to revenue and to 
employee retention and productivity when you use that type of visibility. Some other cool use cases I, I grabbed that I thought were interesting. This was a big mining company, a manufacturer of heavy machinery that's used in mines. Uh, they're rolling out a lot of functionality for their big, uh, you know, uh, dirt haulers, as well as some of the actual mining equipment, the excavators and things like that. And all of those, those, I mean, massive pieces of machinery now are becoming IOT enabled so they can actually send instructions and, uh, and actually remotely operate those massive pieces of machinery. Of course, you can just imagine with that level of dependence on the internet, with lives at stake, with a massive amount of money invested in these multi-million dollar pieces of equipment, visibility across the internet is super important for them. So they use Thousand Eyes to provide some deep insights that they need for those control systems so that they can communicate across the internet with that equipment. And that allows them to take advantage of what they consider to be a differentiator for them as a manufacturer of that heavy equipment in the marketplace. So that's another real good example of how this type of visibility translates to a meaningful business outcome, because they can now offer a product that's bleeding edge, that's taking advantage of the latest technology and leave their kind of competitors in the dust. So uh, I hope that some of these examples that I've just shared were relevant. If these aren't maybe your top of mind, or if you've got use cases, we would love to have a, a follow on conversation with you uh, as part of the, the close of this session. I know that our teams over at uh, CBE um, are a great resource for you to use to engage with if you want to learn more about Thousand Eyes or if you want to get uh, a specific session set up with us. I'd uh, be happy to, to dive into anything else that you might be thinking about one on one. And with that, uh, Bruce, I'm going to hand it back to you. I think I'm all wrapped up for the day. Hey. Hey, thanks so much, Alex. Great, great presentation. Uh, I, I learned a lot from it myself. Um, and hopefully our, our customers find some areas there where they can see relevant use in, in their own environments. Uh, I would like to say also thanks to George for the for the kickoff and talking a little bit about our capabilities at CBE Technologies. Uh, I don't see any questions uh, still remaining. If, if there's if anybody's got a question, go ahead and, and put it in and we can either respond by email or we can open it up live if you get it in there right away. Uh, but like Alex said, the, the takeaway from this, you know, there's, there's no such thing as a free lunch, of course. <laughs> so we would appreciate it if you could uh, give your account manager a call, your CV Technologies account manager, and, uh, and set up a time for them to sit down and, and bring Alex and some of his colleagues in and to sit down with you and, and see how you could make use of this in, in your environment. I believe, uh, Alex, I believe that there's also um, POVs that, that you can do or, or demos that you can do as well, right? Absolutely. Yep. Great. Right. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm still not seeing any additional questions. So I guess we'll give you a couple minutes back. Thanks again for joining. I just, sure I just wanted to add a uh, very quick, Bruce. Uh, Go ahead, so Alfonso. We, we do have a 14 day trial for uh, Thousand Eyes available online. You guys will receive a follow up email with uh, a link to that trial. So uh, I hope you guys are able to kind of explore how this works in, in real time. If you guys have any questions, we're here to help you, of course. But uh, please rely on your um, uh, on, on the team over here. Uh, I know they have a lot of capabilities around our solution, but feel free to play around with our solution. I think you, you guys will be pleased with the results. Thank you, Alfonso. Appreciate that. So 14 day trial that you can get, you can get that online. And try that out, or our, our, our folks will be happy to to help you get the most out of that. So, looking as I mentioned before, look for the uh, the Texas Roadhouse gift certificate coming your way in the next couple of days, and uh, and hope you hope you get some enjoyment out of that. And please enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. <laughs>